Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we have all praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all the elders in Akim and the Aqua that's out there seeking the Lord's face for real. If you got precepts, you understand. You understand. All right. Uh, you got Philippians 1 and 20. So circumstances have us kind of bound to the to the homestead today. We're usually out uh, on the highways and byways pushing the word, you know, making make, making our bodies a living sacrifice to the Most High in the name of Yahweh Shai, so that we can, uh, you know, do what we're called to do, pushing the word, pushing the truth, trying to wake up our people, rebuking these other nations, rebuking our own people. Yeah. It's Philippians 1 and 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Hamashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Life or by death, all right? Magnifying Yahweh Shai. Um, and, and, and what he did for us. And with that, Paul was saying, whether it be in his life or his death, he's going to go do the work. You know, I was talking with my mother earlier today and I was like, I might go do the work by myself. And she got concerned. She was like, please don't do it by yourself. And don't wear a certain color or whatever. And I sent her that. And she was like, well, alrighty then, you know, yeah. if the Lord is with you, who could be against you? But at the same time, you got to look what happened to all the prophets. Jeremiah was stoned. Isaiah got sawed in half. Ezekiel was killed. Micah. I mean, look at what happened to Yahweh Shai. Paul was beheaded. I think Timothy was stoned. Stephen was stoned. You know? It wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a great, lavish life that the prophets was living. Neither is, is what, our lives, you know? We're not seeking the riches of this world. We, we're seeking uh, spiritual riches and uh, spiritual blessings that only come from one source, the Most High God. Um, can you grab uh, John 15 to 20? And I'm going to hit this real quick. Where was I? Oh, this is a, a prayer in Baruch. It's Baruch chapter 3. It says... O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, the soul in anguish, the troubled spirit crieth unto thee. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. All right, what's the wages of sin? It's yeah. death. All right, what's the only way that we get redeemed from that? Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. We was purchased. Okay, for thou, verse 3, for thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and their, of their children, which have sinned before thee, and have not hearkened unto the voice of their God. For for which cause these plagues cleave unto us? I mean, the, going back to the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. All right? What's something that, what, what really compels brothers to, 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 to come out the world, put on the new man, and push the work? Fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's right. All right? To the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Right? If you think you're free here in America or anywhere else in the world, you're not free. You're in captivity. They, the elites of the other nations even left their own people in the captivity with us. Make it seem like it's just not a uh, afflicting one nation. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us. For a reproach and a curse. All right, every nation has ha set up with classes. It's not everybody living on top. All right, then people living on the bottom, more cases than not, are Israelites. 
and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. Okay? Baruch chapter 3. Sear that into your heart and mind. Are we got uh, John? Yep. I right, bring it out. It's John 15 and 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. That's right. So what do we usually get? Oh, you crazy. Oh, that book was written so long ago. Oh, that book been tampered with. But what about the spirit? How can you explain all these spiritual things? You go, right, you go and you go start studying Buddhism and start getting into Buddhism. You start learning about spiritual things, but is it really getting down to the nitty gritty? All right, your Hinduism, all that other real word spiritual stuff, yoga, even some martial arts, you know, you're getting into some deep spiritual things going on. Get, get out of here and keep it quiet. All right. So the real spiritual truths are found in these scriptures that have been left as an inheritance and a heritage for the Israelites. Okay, but what has happened, we fell off, it said in Baruch 3, our forefathers sinned, and now these other nations, weird nations are ruling over us. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. And uh, what is it? Sirach, what was it, 2nd Ezra 6 and 54? About the nations are spit. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Here we go. Isaiah forty-five seventy-three. I think. We'll pull that. See what that is. I got this in Second Ezra chapter six and fifty-four. After these, Adam also, whom thou madest lord over all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So making a divide there. Everybody and then the chosen. All right. And it says, all this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou made the world for our sakes. As for the other people, which also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them to a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. All right? That, that's a deep explanation. No, you cannot. That's a deep explanation for why the lowest class people on the earth are in the state that they're in. Okay? Yeah. The different slave trades. The different oppressions. All right? Where were we at? Oh, you was just getting done John 15 and 20. Yeah. Right? The servant is not greater than the master. All right? So who is our master? Is Yahweh Shai is our master. So we can only expect to go through what he went through or even worse. I mean, what Isaiah went through was pretty bad. Still tell you he didn't put you in nothing is too much for you. Yeah, but he, he must have put Isaiah through that because he knew Isaiah could handle it. Yeah. You know, pray for mercy. Uh, I got one on mercy. Uh, oh, you want to bring uh, Exodus 20 and 6? And I'm going to jump back to Baruch real quick. Because, you know, there's one source for everything going on. There's one source for these other nations and their, their idols. There's one source for that. The Lord did that. Because the Lord does everything. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that real quick. And, uh... Isaiah... 45 and 7. Bring this out first. Yeah, bring that out. It's Exodus 20 and 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Mercy to thousands of them that love me and what? Keep my commandments. And keep the commandments. All right? So you can't be out here. There's one thing to be in ignorance and still eating baby back ribs and shrimps, okay? Not acknowledging the Sabbath in your ignorance. But once you learn and get and get told these things and get taught it through the scriptures, 
you cannot no longer be ignorant. So don't try to pray for mercy while you out here sinning against the Lord knowingly. All right? You need to be praying for mercy every time you pray. That's what that's what is even in the Lord's prayer. You know? The whole purpose is so you can you can have that mercy. Um what was we at? You wanna read that one more time? This is Exodus 20 and 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Alright, plain and simple. And here goes uh, Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So if the Lord our God creates the evil, you know, and we, we're his people, he can protect us from these evils that are down here. Huh. Look what he did with Daniel in the huh. lion's den. Adrag, Meshach, and Abednego in the, furnace. in the furnace, you know. Uh, what else? Isaiah in the wilderness when he was on the move, on the run, all right? King David went through so much. All right, the Lord the Lord is is there, and, and he, he wants you to come back to him, Israel. He's waiting for you. Uh not going to wait forever. Yeah, but there's a time limit here, all right? Grace point. Yeah. Um, let me get, uh, where were, we, where were we at? Oh, let me jump in Baruch real quick. 4 and 18. Baruch, Baruch. Where you at? All right, Baruch. Chapter 4 and 21. Yeah, chapter 4 and 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but God will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from God, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. See, that's why, that's why David said, you know, in part of his Psalms was getting the necks of the enemies, man. Okay, verse 26. My delicate ones have gone rough ways. All right, we're considered sheep amongst wolves. All right, my delicate ones have gone rough ways. A sheep is a delicate animal. They really don't have any defenses. And they provide wool. And, and the, the tenderest meat, you know, all praises to the Most High for creating this world to be a parable for our understanding. Okay, it says, my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock of, or a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was in your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him ten times more. This is powerful. Okay, you were a sheep. We're not, we're, not the, we're, we're not these badasses that are going to go out and form a, our own government and go start, you know, taking over the world again, taking the world back, all right? He had Alexander set up for that. And you know what? Coming back to that, uh, my delicate ones have gone rough ways. Let me get this in uh, Ezekiel. Two and six. 
And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And that's talking about our own people. You know, because how do we fall off? Going with the ways of the world, going with the ways of the other nations. So you have one of our people seemingly walking around with the spirit of the Edomite. Because they done took on the spirit of them. The spirit of the Ishmaelites. Because they done took on the spirits of them. Alright? They turned their back on their heritage. Which is in this book. Which was given to us on Horeb by Moses, man. You got something? Yeah, I'm looking for something. Alright, let's do... Uh, you got Matthew 10 and 24. Let's just reiterate one important point here. Ten and twenty-four. Matthew ten and twenty-four. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. Plain and simple. That's a there's an order going on here. And you're not going to have, you know, if you had a servant at your house, you're not going to have him eating your lamb kebabs and then you're going to eat bread from two days ago. All right? The servant from two days ago will eat the bread and, and the master is going to eat the lamb kebabs. Anything else on that? Can you uh, pull Luke 12 and 4? And I'm going to give an instance, you know, we listed what happened to the prophets along the way. All right. This is Luke 12 and 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that he can do that he can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him. Which after he have killed, after he have killed, have the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear hell. That's right. So don't have your fear in your common enemy walking around. Fear the Lord that, that, that made that enemy the way that he is. Or she is. All right. And with that, this is the book of Second Maccabees chapter 7. Chapter Salakia chapter 7 It came to pass also that seven brethren With their mother were taken And compelled by the king against the law To taste swine's flesh And were tormented with scourges and whips So the king at this time I don't know I can't remember what the king's name was That was doing this But might have been Antiochus Or were the king after him I'm not sure Um so the king took up a couple Israelites, seven Israelites and their mother, and they said, you're going to eat the swine's flesh. They're scourging them and torturing them, trying to get them to eat the swine. All right. But one of them that spake first said thus, thou wouldest, th what wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. All right. And this is in the Apocrypha. All right. These are the books that was taken out. To try to hinder our learning You know Here's an example of Some strong Israelites that Even though they knew that they was going to get You know the worst of the worst They still was like nah we're not eating the, eating the pork And some of y'all would say Oh it's just pork ribs Or all the laws done away with Okay this is after Yahawashai And these brothers Did not was not going to do it all right, let me continue on. We would rather die than transgress the laws of our fathers. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. All right, so you're talking about cutting off all his limbs and cutting out his tongue. Now, when he was thus maimed and all his members... He commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire 
and to be fried in a pan. They put this brother on a frying pan with no arms and legs and appendages and his tongue cut out while all his brothers was watching and his mother was watching. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, The Lord God looketh upon us, and in truth have comfort in us, as Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this manner, they brought the second to make a mocking stock. And this continues on down the line through all seven brothers and the mother. Okay, I beseech y'all to do your due diligence and study this. And don't just start at seven, man. Start back at one. Start back at first Maccabees. Read the whole thing. Right. Eat the whole roll. All right? So that's a heavy, heavy situation there. Okay? But fear, and they didn't fear them that could kill their body and throw their... Uh, appendageless body into a frying pan. They didn't fear them. They said, we're ready to die. We're not breaking the law. So do what you got to do. All right? And just like it said in uh, Baruch 4 and 26, my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Can I get 2 Ezra chapter 15, please? All right? And like it said, there's a, there's a time coming where, you know, this this thing is this thing is going to end. This captivity is going to be done with. Just like we was pulled out of Egypt, right? Crossed all those rivers with the help of the Lord. Yeah, go ahead. The second Ezra fifteen and one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And cause them to be written in paper, but they are faithful and true. Verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Ooh. Verse 4. Read, read 3 again. Verse 3 again. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Fear not the imaginations against thee. I mean, everybody has an imagination, right? And you can, you can dream up whatever you can dream up in your imagination, all right? But think about the wicked, all right? They got imaginations, and they're, they're brainstorming against you. They lay up in their beds at night, losing sleep over what they're going to do to keep mm -hmm. Israel in a low state. Continue on. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, that speak against thee. In Verse. Incredulous bastards. <laughs> Verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Now, have we seen any any of that? We have seen plenty of that going on around here, okay? Verse 6, For, the, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So there's a fulfillment of the wicked works. All right. How far can they take their wickedness until, you know, something's got to give? All right. Look at the technology, man. The microchips right around the corner. That's got to come to pass to fulfill the prophecy. Don't act like, you know, you it's going to be able to be avoided. But pray the Lord have mercy and protect you from it and, 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 and hold you hold you steadfast in that hour of temptation. Go ahead. Is there verse anything else? seven. Therefore said the Lord, verse eight, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they have profanely committed. Neither will I suffer them in those things, in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, Ooh. and the souls of the just complain continually. Now look at that. The souls of the just complain continually, all right? And the blood the blood of the innocent crieth unto him. How many abortions happened just this morning, probably? All right, that blood's crying unto the Lord. And where is all your Planned Parenthoods and all your abortion clinics? In the hoods. 
where most of Israel is located. Okay? It's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And I and will destroy all the land thereof. Verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundations of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. Verse 13. Hold on, hold on, hold that. Let me, uh, let me get this in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and 13. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. Talking about her as being wisdom. Okay. I shall set the people in order and the nations shall be subject to me. Nations being plural shall be subject to me. Horrible tyrants shall be afraid when they do but hear of me. I shall be found good among the multitude and valiant in war. Okay? And that's wisdom. That's the wisdom. Her, the water, these things that can be found in these precepts so we can have understanding. Because what does it say? Wisdom and, and knowledge shall be the stability of the times. It doesn't say your sword will be the stability of the times. Okay? What, what, when Yahushua was on his way to get to the garden to get took by the Roman soldiers, what did he say? He said... Get a sword. If you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and bring a sword. Make sure we have swords. And then when they got to the garden, the Roman soldier put his hands on Yehawashai, and Peter smote the ear off of the Roman soldier. And then all of a sudden, Yehawashai healed his ear and said, put that sword away. He who, it's not the time for that. He who lives by the sword will die by the sword. If you was there and, and that happened, you would be saying, well, why did we bring these swords? For that reason, so that Yahushua could say that. So the, your sword is not going to be the stability of your times. That's not our blessing, Israel. And your guns is not going to be the stability of the times. Wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of the times. And that's what allowed the Maccabe Maccabees brothers in chapter, or Second Maccabees chapter 7, that's what allowed them to be able to uh, go through that tribulation. You know, because they had the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that going back to Philippians 1 and 20, 1 and 21, to live is to Christ and to die is to gain. Matter of fact, let's bring that back out. You still got you still holding it? No. Oh, let's see. I got it. Philippians, right? Yeah, I got it. Philippians 1 and 20. All right, Philippians 1 and 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So there it is. They knew what was going on. Because they had the understanding of what this means. All right. And then the next verse says, for me, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All right. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Yahweh Shai, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So it'd be nice to not have to be in this vessel and my spirit could be back free, weightless, you know, not subject to atmospheric pressure. We're all subject to atmospheric pressure and the, and the density of your body being pulled down to the ground, you know, your joints, your whole age and timeline aging process. All right. But we're here for a reason. OK, we're here for the charity of the brethren. And, and 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 for to be the iron that sharpens the other iron, iron sharpens other iron. All right. And and right now we in the time of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream where we in 
with the iron and the and the miry clay all mixed together. Mm. All right, this is this is not easy. This is not an easy easy task. But in ignorance in in the world, you know, you be out gallivanting around doing whatever you want, man. Not caring about none of it. All right, probably wearing a Jesus piece necklace. Mm -hmm. All right. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. That's what was more needful for us, so we can be a beacon, so we can use our use these swords, use our tongues, and our voices to to you know cry aloud and spare not. Lift up our voices like a trumpet on the highways and byways, which you know we're not at right now. This is a kind of more comfortable, kind of more candid setting. All right. Let's see. What else we had? You holding anything? No. How about uh? I'll bring out Sirach. I'll bring out Sirach. Uh, Sirach, eleven and twenty-two. the book of Sirach 11 and 22 the blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly and suddenly he maketh his blessing to flourish so say not what profit is there of my service and what good thing shall I have hereafter again say not I have enough and possess many things what evil can come to me hereafter in the day of prosperity there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. For it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. All right? And I'm going to jump up to verse 13. It says, Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come nigh wild beasts? So, you know, did you cry when Kobe died? Did you cry when uh, Chadwick Boseman died? All right, because they was char. They wh who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? All right, these these people out here in 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 the in the world's eye view, you know, they give the one eye symbolism. Anybody that you you can put any celebrity's name into Google Images, and if you see this or this. Or any kind of this blocking one eye, man, they then made the deal with the devil. There are snake charmers at that point. Okay? They have to do the dance so that the their their handlers won't bite them. Alright? Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? Nobody. Because the, they're messing with snakes, man. They're messing with, with serpents. Alright? And what it what it, it, it even Kobe even called itself the Mamba madness man and and back in in verse uh, Sirach 11 and 20 23 says say not what profit is there of my service and what good things shall I have hereafter all right it's not about doing this work so you can get the blessings of a Benz or you know whatever your your worldly th wants are a jet ski all right that's what that's what ends up happening with, with these big name preachers out here running these big 501c3 churches, right? They get everybody, they send in the basket around and send in the basket around and they driving a, a jag with rims. All right? Two sunroofs. I don't know. You got something? No. What? No. I'll let you know. All right, yeah, just wait. All right, I got uh, another one in Ciroc. Yeah, 15. Got, yeah, I got 15 and 1 and then 15 and 13. All right, this is Ciroc, chapter 15. He that feareth the Lord will do good, and he that hath the knowledge of the law shall obtain her. Okay? He that feareth the Lord will do good. And we, we, how Shai said, there is none good, right? Only one. But he that feareth the Lord will do good, all right? You know, we'll come out here and tell our people, you know, you got to follow the dietary laws. Brother, you got to grow a beard. Women, get right. 
you know, that's a whole other lesson in and of itself. I'm going to jump over to uh, Sirach 15 and, and 12. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judgeth a man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils, and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. Right? So if you have patience and you're enduring, you're your plan is to endure to the end, your patience will not go unrewarded. Right? Verse 14. Make way for every work of mercy, for every man shall find according to his works. Let me just continue on. The Lord hardened Pharaoh that he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. So you see what I said right there? The Lord hardened Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't harden his heart on purpose. Because your heart, that's, you know, that's your spirit about you. So the Lord put the spirit on you to, you know, to be hardened. That he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. His mercy is manifest to every creature. And he has separated his light from the darkness with an adamant. All right? Because there is no in-between. There's either dark or light. Good or evil. Sweet or salty? Well, sweet and salty, you can have both. You know. <laughs> But, you know, he divided this, these things adamantly. And there's no half-stepping. And, and what happens if you lukewarm? You get spewed out. You get spewed out, right? So we're trying to have everybody be on fire out here, you know? Going back to using the examples of the, 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 the our forefathers, Elijah, Isaiah, you know, Jeremiah, Nehemiah. You know, we can't go around yanking out people's hair. Because we get arrested out here, but you know we can still have that that fervency, that fervent heat that that Nehemiah was coming with in his spirit. Okay, uh, and then twelve to fourteen. Let's get uh, I think it was Psalms thirty-eight. Let me see. It's just something, that, something, something good to wrap up on. Psalm thirty-eight. Yeah, what's in Psalm thirty-eight? One. Let me see. Yeah, start reading. Psalm thirty-eight and one, the Psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. O Yahweh, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasteneth me in thy hot displeasure. Verse 2, but thy arrows st stick fast in me, and they have pressed me sore. And thy hand pressed me sore. Oh, so I, and thy hand pressed me sore. Verse 3, there is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Listen to how humble David was about this. Okay? This is basically him crying out to the Lord, opening up his heart in song. Continue on. Bible Verse 4. For my iniquities have 